May 20th, 1921. The Roaring Twenties and Flappers were in full swing. Prohibition was the law of the land, and in Roseville as elsewhere, private citizens and saloon keepers alike were not left untouched by the attempt to rid America of the devil's nectar. As this May 20th, 1921 article in the Sacramento Bee will attest, Roseville Tavern owner Jack Morgan learned this firsthand. There was one person on the streets of Roseville this day who had more on his mind than where he could score some bootleg at one of the several speakeasies in town. Yes, he had much more on his mind than that. At this wild time in the 20th century, Roy Gardner was one of the most notorious outlaws in the land. Mail trucks and mail trains were his favorite targets, but he would not discriminate against jewelry stores or other merchants as the need arose. The infamous gardener's name has pretty much faded into history, which is somewhat of a shame. His felonious pursuits, fear and havoc that he brought forth in this country were every bit as noteworthy as the Wild West outlaws from the previous century or the Depression-era gangsters who would become household names a decade later. What separated him from the others, besides timing, is that one of his most daring and sensational ill deeds began and ended right here in Roseville. Make no mistake about it, Gardner was a household name in the 1920s. He is considered by many to be one of the most ruthless criminals in American history. An examination of his nefarious life would explain why. Gardner's life of thievery began in the early 1900s. He did time in San Quentin for robbing a jewelry store in San Francisco in 1905. By the time he'd made his presence known in Roseville, he had already been convicted of robbing a mail truck in San Diego in April of 1920 and getting away with a reported $78,000. He was sentenced to 25 years at McNeil Island Federal Penitentiary near Tacoma. However, Gardner, who vowed never to serve his sentence, overtook his two guards on a train near Portland, Oregon, en route to the big house. Now Gardner, for a short period of time, had worked for the Mare Island shipyard. His wife, Dolly, lived in Napa. The authorities got word that he might be in the Napa area, and indeed he was staying with Dolly, but before the feds could get the drop on him, he hitchhiked from Napa to Fairfield. From Fairfield, he stole a car and drove to Sacramento. After several days in Sacramento, he hitchhiked to Roseville. He was given a ride by an unwitting owner of Roseville's Mint Cafe. Once in Roseville, Gardner settled into a room at the Porter House Hotel near the corner of Atlantic and Lincoln Streets across from the train yard. On Friday evening, May 21st, 1921, Gardner boarded the Pacific Limited, also known as the number 20 train in Roseville. The train left Roseville at 10.15 p.m. and was to arrive in Newcastle at 11.08. Somewhere near Rockland, Gardner, who had been hiding in the mail storage car, overtook the startled mail clerk, Ralph Decker, who had been sleeping. According to Decker, Gardner had been armed with a 45 revolver and wore a white rag as a mask. He tied Decker up, robbed him, and slit open as many as 50 mail bags, putting the valuable mail into a single bag and threw it overboard. Approximately a quarter of a mile west of Newcastle, the bandit pulled the train's emergency cord. The train then stopped and Gardner had made his escape. Some reports say that he got away with as much as $200,000 in the robbery. In Gardner's own words to the San Francisco Chronicle, he claimed, and I quote now, I threw the loot overboard and spent hours that night searching along the railroad tracks for the mail sack that I had thrown off the train without success. Law enforcement agents later recovered the mail bag with all the stolen money inside. According to the Sacramento Bee, posses in both Sacramento and Placer counties were searching the nearby foothills of Placer County. By his own account, Gardner got back to Roseville at about 7 a.m. and had breakfast at the Peerless Cafe. Two nights later, Around 9 o'clock, while playing poker at the Ridley Cigar Store, believed to be inside the Porterhouse Hotel, Gardner was approached by, some reports say, Placer County Sheriff Al Locke, others say federal and railroad agents. 
Perhaps it was a combination of both. Gardner was arrested without incident and driven back to Sacramento. He was tried and sentenced an additional 25 years at McNeil Island on top of the 25 years he had received for the earlier robbery in San Diego. So you think the story ends there? Well, think again. Remember his escape from the train on his last trip to prison? And remember his boast that he would never serve his sentence? Well, old habits die hard. On another train, Gardner again overtook his guards and escaped to Centralia, Washington. This freedom only lasted a couple of days, however. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that's the end of Roy Gardner. Again, not quite. On Labor Day, 1921, during an inmate baseball game, Gardner and two fellow convicts climbed through a hole in the fence while the guards were distracted by the ball game. While one of his partners was shot dead and the other wounded, Gardner, of course, escaped. Two weeks later, he was arrested while attempting to rob a train in, of all places, Phoenix, Arizona. Some feel that he'd used the money from the earlier San Diego robbery to finance this escape. This time, there was no way out. An additional 25 years was tacked on to the 50 that he was already serving, and he was sent to Leavenworth. After a long hunger strike several years later, he was then sent to a federal penitentiary in Georgia. After spending several years in Alcatraz, he was released on clemency in 1938. On January 10, 1940, ever the escape artist, he escaped one final time. In a small hotel room in San Francisco, he took his own life by inhaling poisonous gas. Truly the end for Mr. Gardner. I'd like to add a couple of anecdotes to Mr. Gardner's story. He certainly must have been an unabashed self-promoter. It appears that he gave interviews to newspapers at the drop of a hat. The officer who arrested Gardner after his escape in Centralia, Washington, Louis Sonny, was so taken in by him that he gave half of his $5,000 reward to Gardner's destitute family, and they remained friends until Gardner's death. As for Dolly Gardner, she stood by her man for more than 20 years, but in 1936, at the age of 39, she filed for divorce in Napa. Reports were that she had found a new romance. The saga of Roy Gardner is an interesting one. His story has all the ingredients of a Hollywood movie. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids certainly have nothing on Mr. Gardner, a man who thought it would be a marvelous idea to come to the little railroad town of Roseville in 1921 and rob a train.